Okay guys, welcome back. We have smoothed out our original time series data, which I am highlighting here, by taking a moving average and then centering that moving average. Now we move on to extracting the seasonal component. To do this, this will also take a sequence of steps. First thing we're going to do, we're going to call this seasonal and irregular. So what we're going to get here is going to be a combination of the seasonal and irregular component. Okay, the irregular component is going to come with the seasonality, and we can do this because we have essentially smoothed out the time series data, and now it uh, the seasonality is kind of there for the taking. We can kind of this sep we've separated it from here. We just need to calculate that dif difference. In this case, it's going to be a quotient because it's the multiplicative model. Um, and we're going to get those values here. So how do you do this? I'm going to make just a note here. We're going to do y, which is the original time series value, divided by CMA. So we're going to go row by row. Take And we, obviously, we can only do this. We can only do this for the, the rows, the time periods that we have a um, center moving average value for. So there's going to be blanks. Do, do not be alarmed by this. Okay. So equals y for time period 3 divided by CMA for time period 3. Enter. And this is simple. I could just drag this down. And I'm not going to go beyond my uh, 14th time period in this case. Let me just clean this up a bit and get a little uh, messy here with decimal places. Okay, so here are my seasonal irregular uh, uh, components mixed up together. Okay, now I want to isolate the seasonality in the next step. So our method to kind of get rid of the irregular. Remember, irregular is, is the inexplicable or um, uncontrollable, right? So um, we understand the least about that. So one, one method we use, one simple method we use to kind of take care of that issue of uh, irregularity is to just average over the seasonal and irregular, and in essence, average away the irregular component, OK? So to do that, in other words, I just want a column that's just pure S and basically make I just go away from the model, right? To do this, we're going to use averaging. So I'm going to be careful. I'm going to selectively average. Since uh, I have four quarters, I'm going to end up with four seasonal components, one for each quarter. And the way I'm going to get each of those is by averaging all the available seasonal irregulars. So in other words, for I want to make a table somewhere. Let me move this aside. Um, somewhere way off on the side, may, give yourself considerable room. OK, let me actually bring this plot down. OK, maybe way out here, I'm going to make a little table for myself called seasonal, or just, uh, yeah, seasonal component, okay, uh, just S, S would suffice for us, right? We would kind of know what this is. And uh, actually, let me, let me do it this way. <clears throat> so I have four quarters. I could also have wrote period or whatever it was. If it was months, I would have 12 months here, right? If it was weekly data, I would have Monday through Sunday. And here is the seasonal component. So um, here I'm going to average all the quarter one seasonal irregulars. So in other words, the number I'm going to place here, in other words, call my quarter one seasonal component, is going to be the average of all the seasonal irregular quarter one. So how many do I have? I have one over here. 0.97, I have one over here, 0.92, and I have one over here. So averaging these three numbers is going to be my seasonal component for quarter uh, one, okay? 
which in this case is for time periods 5, 9, 13, uh, and 1, even though we don't have a value. So I'm going to average 0 0.97, 0 0.92, 0 0.99. That's going to be my seasonal component for all quarter ones. So equals average. Now you can do this in many ways. You can just hold the control button after you've opened the parentheses and click on quarter all the, be careful to only take quarter one okay and hit enter so we get 0.93 another way you could we could do the same thing is to do equals average if and this is a little more fancy if you kind of look at the the uh, uh, function details here for average if first you have the criteria range so that's going to be you're going to carefully select the quarters only the ones where you have a SI in other words you don't want to go past what you have data for I'm going to hit F4 on the keyboard and that's going to put dollar signs around my formula you could also look at my formula up here and then I'm going to continue. The criteria is going to I've set up. That's why I set up this column here. This, this is telling it to look in that first co column that I just highlighted first for ones, which is quarter one, comma. And when it finds those, average the numbers in this column that are associated with quarter ones. In other words, it's going to go to this column. It's going to find quarter one and then record this number this number and this number and average them okay and then when I pull this formula down the criteria is just going to change and so I'll be able to easily get all the averages so have your pick on um, which way you want actually I should also have hit F4 for the last argument average if okay so take a good look at my formula pause rewind watch this again hit enter you will get the same 0.93 that we got using the other method. Do it your way. You could go slower and just do it the other way. The advantage of this is I can just drag this down. And if I had 12 months, I wouldn't have to do that formula 12 times. I would just do it once and then drag that down. Whereas the original method we did, where we hold the control button down and clicked on quarter ones, we would have had to do that for quarter two separately, three, four. If it was monthly data, we'd have to do it for 12 months separately. Here, we spent some time, learned a formula, uh, kind of double checked it, and then uh, dragged it down and uh, only typed it once. Okay. Now, once I got these guys, I can pull them back in to their respective homes. So everywhere I have a quarter one now, I'm going to put a 0.93. I'm going to put the seasonal component for quarter one everywhere where there's a quarter one. Uh, and a quarter two everywhere there is a quarter two and so on and so forth I'm gonna drag that down and I'm even I'm gonna even drag this down into the future so a couple ways to do this uh, the fanciest way actually let's let's work on this V lookup not so difficult V equals V lookup open the parentheses the first argument is what do you want to look up that's going to be the quarter because remember the seasonal components are connected to the quarters okay so all quarter ones have this seasonal component so first thing argument is what do you want to look up well I'm on row time period one so it's quarter one so I want to click on the its quarter that's what I want to look up comma where do you want to look well that's what I made this table for I like the whole table and then I hit the F4 key on my keyboard to get the absolute references, the dollar signs. Comma. Once I find that quarter one in this first column, then what do you want me to do? And the way you talk, the way you tell it what to do here is by specifying the column that you want it to return. So this is always column one, two. You could have had many more columns. In this case, column two contains the seasonal components that we want. So we specify two. This way, when it finds quarter one, it's going to 
give me this number okay and then finally false <clears throat> just tells it to make sure you're finding exact matches and not according to some kind of um, just being close okay hit enter and make sure it's doing it right I, that's exactly what I expected for a quarter one right okay let's drag it down and make sure it's doing the right thing just check you see that everything is falling into place I'm gonna slowly drag it down you could see all these are correct let's do a spot check here's 1.09 that's a quarter three hey look at quarter three it's 1.09 I'm even going to drag this down into the future. So what do I mean by the future? In this example, remember 2015 was the future. Okay, That's a little setup for what's coming later. Okay. By the way, I'm also going to change the color on this so it's clear that that's the future. What does the future look like? Does it look green? Hopefully. Hopefully for our sake, for our children's sake. right? So I'm going to make that green. Uh, so just so it's clear that that's the future and everything else here was the past okay so I dragged my seasonal components into the future and that's mostly because later down the line I'm gonna need that when I want to make my final step my my forecast okay so we went through smoothing out the data then we extracted the seasonal and irregular component and then from that we extracted the seasonal component by averaging away the irregular component. So really what's left for us to do is look at the trend component, right? Once we have the trend component, we can put it all together. So I'm going to stop here and uh, continue talking about the trend component and perhaps uh, in the same video also close out by making forecasts. So please continue to watch. Thanks for watching up to this point. Uh, Till next time, have a great day.